Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who is that DJing like that? You guys should already know that it is my cousin, DJ Ryan Wolf, DJing like that. Well, I am back. Lockout Men, that is me. Welcome to the Lockout Men podcast show. And I am here with another podcast interview for you guys tonight. I think it's tonight. It's nighttime. Yeah. You guys can't probably tell that it's nighttime, but you could probably tell it's nighttime. I am parked right in front of this uh in front of this livestock hauler. Well, he got cows in his in his uh in his trailer, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, uh yeah, kinda lost kind kinda got off track there. <laughs> let me get back on the let me get back on the track. We have a, a young lady here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. New driver. Been driving for about eight months. And uh, she's here from Swift. We like to... Hold on right quick. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Got to get everything set. Don't, don't, don't laugh, y'all. And and don't hate. Don't, don't, don't hate on the Swift driver. You know what I'm saying? There are some good Swift drivers out there. And I'm going to bet that this young lady is one of them. All right. We're going to talk to her, find out what her experience is with Swift and more. We would like to welcome Tiffany Hustle to the show. What's up, people? What's up? What's up? So, uh, Tiffany, man, uh, I came I came across your YouTube page by way of uh by way of a subscriber. Uh you know, they kind of they kind of sent me your video and the video that they actually sent me was was kind of was kind of a nasty video. <laughs> my my G was like, "Yo, check out this young lady. She's a she's a driver, but she but she got this video called Clear a Stuffy Nose. And I, I clicked on it and I was like, no, nah, man. What <laughs> what persuaded you to to make that particular video, man? Well, honestly, like I was just really like going off through it with my sickness. And I was looking up ways to like unclog my nose and like, I wasn't finding anything. I was just like, okay. So I asked my grandma, like, is there a way I can unclog it? Like, she was like, well, basically told me about, like, what they used to do, like, back in the day. So I was like, all right, let me try this. So let me, like, tweak it a little bit. So Grandma like, techniques. Swear, grandma techniques. Yeah, old, was, old school grandma techniques. I mean, the new school stuff that don't work, you can guarantee a grandma technique will. Yeah, so it was like three in the morning, and um, I was just like going through it, and like my nose was running. I could not do anything about it, so I'm just like, okay, let me just try this thing. So I just started making the video, and then I was like, I'm gonna record this because I didn't find anything on YouTube about it. So I was just like, okay, let me just go and make this video. So I made the video, no lie, like. At three in the morning, I got done, and literally, like, I swear, I was like focusing on other videos, and I didn't even notice that this video had already hit nine thousand views in like a month. So I was just like, "Oh dang, like this is crazy!" I didn't even know. I didn't even notice. Like YouTube didn't give me like no notification telling me anything. So I was just like, "Oh dang!" Then next thing I know, like. I just start promoting because I, I really don't promote my videos like that on any of my social media. So I just start promoting it more and more. And then it just started getting more. At first, it was like 9,000. Then it was at 12,000. Then it was at 20,000. Then mm -hmm. now the video was sitting at 41,000 
actually it's on the road. Actually, it's forty two thousand it hit today, forty two thousand views, and I was like, forty two, like forty two k. Yeah, you, you, YouTube is funny. Uh, you know what I'm saying? YouTube is very funny. But if you you make a video like like something like that, it 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 it. it It'll pretty much catch on, but if you make another video just talking about something simple, you ain't gonna get that many that that many views on it. YouTube is a YouTube is a fickle thing. Uh, Tiffany Hustle, man, you you came up with the you came up with the name Tiffany Hustle. Um, where where did you come up with that? Where did you come up with that name? Like literally, everybody says like. You got that from Nipsey Hustle, and I'm like, I never even knew who that man was. I just literally, um, I just literally always been like the hustler, and like you know how Ti Ti has his own way. He has his own wave of like the hustle brand and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I was just like, I know it's another way that you can spell it, so I just start spelling it like that. And then once that happened, like. People really think that's my real name. So, like, <laughs> even when sometimes I go to, like, other places, they be like, oh, Tiffany Hustle, Tiffany Hustle. That's not really my real name. So, um, literally, like, literally, it was just, like, one of those 3 a.m. thoughts. Like, I'm going to just start calling myself Tiffany Hustle because everybody in my family always call me, like, a hustler, a go-getter. And I'm just like, Tiffany Hustle, that's my name. So you stay. So you you said bump it. I'm gonna stay with Tiffany Hustle. That's what's up, man. Yes, that's sure. that's what's up. So where are you from? Where where are you from? Where tell tell the people uh tell the people where you from? I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, you right next you right next door. So what was life night? Like, what was life like for a young Tiffany Hustle back in the day? Um. Well, I. Um, my mom passed away as a young, when I was young, when I was two years old. Um, I also, you know, I never really knew my father. So, um, but my grandma stepped in and, you know, it was like nothing ever happened. You know, I, I had a regular childhood. Um, I, I'm the, it's only three grandchildren. Um, and I'm the middle. I'm just the most spoiled out of all of us. Um, and I'm a grandma's girl. I'm a grandma's girl to the fullest. And yeah, I mean, I still live in the, I grew up in the same house, still live in the same house that I've always lived in as a child. And yeah, I mean, I, well, first let me, uh, pretty much, let me, let me send my condolences out to you, uh, for your, for your moms and everything. Um, uh, I can't, uh, my mom's is still with me, so I still can't fan on the fact of of losing a parent. Um, my uh, family member just recently lost her grandmother uh, about about a couple of about a about a week ago. Now her funeral was just past, uh, past Saturday of last week. Um, it kind of hit her hard because she wasn't able to see her grandmother in her last. Uh, in her last life because of the coronavirus keeping everybody away and she was in the nursing home and it's unfortunate that she got the unfortunate phone call and uh yeah she's she's not taking it well i could tell you that right now so definitely uh my condolences to you for your uh for your moms um being that uh being that you are a grandma's girl um and you, you say you lost your moms at a young age. How how old was you when when uh when she went home and how did that affect you? Um, I was I was two years old when she left. She actually um she actually had breast cancer. Um by the time they end up finding it and she was already in her fourth stage of breast cancer, um, she had a hard time getting pregnant. They start putting her on hormones and then she got pregnant with me um you know and I was you know from the stories I was told I was the light of her world and um the love of her life so it's it's 
it's something that I deal with on a constant basis. Um, you know, I try to always remember that she's in a better place and that God has a better purpose for her. And she's always going to be looking down at me in those times where I need her. She's always there. I feel her presence very strongly. So you, you, her mirror, are you, you the only, you, you, her only baby or did she have any kids before you or, or you, you, the, yes, I'm the only child, I'm the only child. So you're the, you, you, her miracle baby. God bless her. God bless you as well, man. That's so, that, that is so awesome to hear that you still keep your, keep your moms in your heart and all like that. And, and all the good stories from what your grandmother uh have have told you about uh about your moms that's a that's a that's a blessing right there to know so you, yeah yeah it's, i'm very blessed so your grandmother stepped in and and got you uh got you going in the right direction and everything and now that uh what <laughs> before we get into trucking what what was you doing before you got into trucking Honestly, jumping from job to job, like, I'm the type of person, like, I like to do things on my own terms. Like I said, I've always been, like, a hustler. So, like, I always knew, like, I, I can't get rich from a nine to five. I can't get rich from working from somebody else. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, I've been talking about getting my CDL for a long time, ever since I was 21. So, I was just like, okay. I kind of went through a, a, a breakup and I had my, my little spell with the breakup. And I was like, all right, let, Tiffany, it's time for you to get out of that spell and just do what you want to do. And, you know, I, I just went for it. I literally called the school and said, you know, hey, like, I want to go. She said, I can start you tomorrow if you want to. I said, okay. And literally that next day I went in. So. Man, Tiffany, sitting here listening to your to your story, man, kind of it, it, it kind of mirrors my story. <laughs> yeah. It kind of mirrors my story because my story, it, it, I, you know, I, I didn't want to uh, I, I had a hard time working with people, you know, job to job, job jumping and all like that. I went about. I went about a good 10 years uh, of being a hustler. You know what I'm saying? I was the I was the DVD man, the CD man. You know, I was the one that go in the barber shops and the in the plazas, three, you know, CDs, DVDs. I got them for you. You know, made a made made a nice little profit there. But uh, I knew there wasn't no 401k in 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 hustling. And I went back to work. You know, I went back to uh, I went back to work working at this factory up in Solon. I did that for a couple of years, only to come to find out that it's it still didn't work for me. So uh, I started my own uh, I started my own little roadside business, and then you know the relationship thing with me happened. You know, me and my wife we separated. And, you know, me and my son was talking and I was like, look, it's I, I might as well go ahead and get into trucking, man, because I said I was going to do it. I've been wanting to do it, but I was just too hesitant to do it. But that one day I just went up to the school, slapped down the credit card and just told him, let's do it. Let's do it. So, yeah, your story mirrors mine, man. So. So, yeah. So trucking. So you went to school. Or you, or you went to, you went to, well, it says here Swift. So did you go through Swift Academy or did you go to school? Well, I, I went to school um, to get my CDL. And then once there, I applied to some different companies. And um, like my truck, my uncle, he's been in trucking over 14 years. So he was basically telling me like Swift. You know, they don't have really a good reputation, but it's, it's good for beginners. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I got with that company because I was like, it's a larger company. And usually with the smaller companies, they want you to have at least six months experience, three months experience. And, you know, it's like, okay, Swiss is going to take me as I am. And, you know, it is what it is, you know, with Swiss. So, 
So what was the what so Swift got you in? What was the orientation like? I mean, was was the orientation the same? Nope. Was did when you talked to the recruiter, was everything that the recruiter said uh was reality when you went into the orientation, or was there some inconsistencies? Um, well with Swift. Uh, with with Swift being a larger company, when I went there, um, they basically told me, you know, hey, we're gonna put you here, um, and you. They basically made it seem like it was gonna be a fast type of process. You know, orientation was about three days, uh, but honestly, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't as fast as they thought it was going to be. Um, I, the orientation, you know, got out of orientation. They ended up sending me back home because all of my paperwork was not uh, put through. And I'm like, why isn't any of my paperwork put through? I still had background checks that wasn't, you know, done. I'm like, I have a clean record. Like, I'm 24. I'm 23. Well, I was 23 at the time. I'm like, I'm 23. Like, there's no way that my, you know, I've worked for the government before, so it's, not, it's I don't know what was taking so long. So I'm just like, um, I was just really confused at that. And then, um, as far as the process, it ended up taking them almost like three weeks to pair me with somebody. Um, no, they weren't good at communicating as well. Like, they're very unorganized when it comes to that um and just getting you in getting you with a driving manager after training and making sure that you're with somebody that is going to be okay with with you being on that truck for five weeks um i told them my expectations for my mentor and none of those were met um <laughs> My mentor was cool, no less. He was cool, no less, but some of the stuff I did not um, really approve of. And I really didn't want to go with a male. I really wanted to go with a female. And can you el- instead of them just telling me. Can you elaborate? Uh-huh. Can you elaborate on, on some of the stuff that, that you wanted that you didn't get? Um. Well, I'm going to start with first I wanted a, a female, non-smoking um, mentor, I didn't want anybody that smoked tobacco or anything because I don't smoke. Um, and I wanted a female instead of them just telling me off back, you know, that's going to be hard or we don't have a driver right now or whatever that was. They kind of just like, okay, that's their preference, whatever. And so I'm waiting two and three weeks and I'm like, why am I still not on this truck? Um, and then as far as I said, if it's a male, I don't. I want a male that's going to be clean, that's you know, that's going to be okay with a woman on there. That's not because I did hear about Swiss pairing women with just any kind of male, and I'm very respectable, but I'm also very feisty, and you're not going to just do anything to me, um, talk any way to me, because um, we're both grown, and that's just not how work should be, you know. So. Um, I feel like as far as the pairing, my, my, my driver leader, he was not, um, very clean. Mm. Um, he was very knowledgeable though. He was very knowledgeable. But he wasn't, but he wasn't clean. He did not make me do, huh? I say he wasn't clean. Sound like my driver, uh, driver trainer at the time. He wasn't, he wasn't a clean dude either. <laughs> it, yeah, um, he, he wasn't a clean dude either but um but i guess we had to we we had to we had to take what we could get in order to get uh to get our yeah. experience at the time man you know and this is crazy yeah. so is that was this so you you rocked out fully with the guy or you had to did you change to go with another trainer was there trouble in paradise when you was on this truck or no no literally um oh oh another thing is he he went home a lot 
<laughs> so that also made my time longer. Um, I I originally was on the truck five five um five weeks when I really only was supposed to be on the truck three weeks top. Um, but he went home a lot, so that was kind of aggravating. I did not drop a. A, a driver. I did not drop my mentor because I did not want to be on an, uh, another person's truck any longer. I didn't want to have to get to know and deal with another person. I was just like, let me just thug this out. Once I get off this truck, I'll be by myself and then that's just what it is, you know? Okay. So I definitely just thugged it out. I mean, like I said, the times where he went home, that was my break for him. And, you know, it was just like, hey, I'm off the truck. I'm coming home for the weekend and I'll be home for the weekend or I'll come home for Christmas or whatever. And then, you know, I'll just be home. Um, like I said, no less he was nice or whatever. Um, I actually had to spend my birthday on the truck, so it was no coming home for that. <laughs> um, but he was very nice. He was very nice, but it was just, you know, I, I wouldn't say trouble in paradise, but he was kind of aggravating at times. Okay. Um, but like I said, I'm an adult. I can, I can, I'm able to speak to you and let you know without, you know, causing tension or friction on the truck because it it is a small place for two people. So, what was your what was your inspirations for uh, getting into trucking? Like, I mean, what inspired you to just uh, get into trucking? I know you say you was job jumping well, honestly, and everything, was, but it was there like an inspiration other than your, you say your uncle was in it for 14 years? Yeah, my uncle, he's been, he still drives to this day. But um, with me, I feel that the reason I was more inspired to truck because I was just like, all right, I'm 20, I'm 23. Where do I want to be in the next? year or two like what's the quickest way for me to make the most money because i i was like i have to go back to college in order to make at least 60k a year i'm like do i really want to do that i'm like no i'm like okay what can i do right now to get me to that 50 60k a year so i'm just like okay you know to the average human being like with me like i used to go to college so with me being in college and, and playing ball and doing all that extra stuff, I was just, like, over it, over going to school and over feeling like, dang, like, four years is a long time. And then I was just watching my life basically pass by, and I'm just like, okay, trucking, I can get to that money easy. I don't have to worry about, you know, nobody looking over my shoulder, micromanaging me. It's kind of, it's more independent. It, it was an independence that attracted me to trucking, honestly. Okay, okay. So uh, now that you're in the truck, what was your what was your first experience uh, being, a, being behind the wheel of a truck by yourself? Well, honestly, like I said, if you guys watch my YouTube videos, you guys know that my first week on the truck was horrible. My first week on the truck by myself was horrible. Um, I had took a, I had to come back home to Indiana mm -hmm. to move my car, um, to move my car and take it back to Indianapolis. So I had to actually I had to move it from Indianapolis and take it to Gary. So um, I end up coming back home, taking the Costco route to Costco in um indiana and my truck ended up breaking down and it was freezing this was what this was this no i was january mm -hmm. it was january already because i was off the truck so it was january um i was off the truck i was well i was off my mentor truck so yeah so it was about february and um yeah, my first week was horrible. My truck broke down. Um, they had to find me a new truck. So they, I had to end up staying in a hotel. Then I end up getting my car, taking it to um, Indiana. And then um, 
once I got my car, I had to stay in another hotel close to my house. And then I was there for like three days. So I really wasn't making no money my first week. My first week was my lowest check. I made like, I think I made like $600 my first week by myself. Wow. And that was just, the $600 wasn't even me driving. It was just me being basically the ten, stuck Yeah, they was giving you layover. Days. They was giving you layover and breakdown. Uh, wh- yeah. wh- what happened? What was the matter with the truck? Okay, so um, when they picked, when we had to pick our truck, I had originally picked a Kenworth, a 2017 Kenworth, but that Kenworth was, it was shaking before I even got to drive it. Um, before I even drove it off the lot, it was just shaking so bad, so I was just like, nah, I gotta switch. Mm-hmm. So I ended up getting the 2018 International. And so that would end up breaking down before I even got off of the truck. Wow. But I mean, before I even got out of the lot, it, it literally shut down at the stoplight. Man. So I was just like, they, okay, they not taking care of They, they not taking care of the equipment? What's going on? I don't know. I don't know if it's because the winter, so they turn off the trucks, but it's like, I don't think they go and run them and drive them, you know, around to, you know, because it's winter, but it's, they're in Chicago. So it's, I'm actually, no, yeah, I was in Chicago. So they're in Chicago, and I'm just like, okay, what is going on? And so I'm just like, all right, well, I end up getting a twenty, a 2019 International, and that one was fine. It got that I took the load to Indiana. Boom, everything was fine. I turned my truck off after I um, drop off the load and get the other load to take back to Gary. To get my car and the truck would not start mm. so i'm just like here i am it's freezing cold like it, it's hailing outside and the wind is blowing so bad i'm just like oh my God. so i'm calling this back like hey my truck broke down they tell me to try this you know turn the kill switch off you know turn it back on you know restart the truck you know, check to see if this is wrong, check to see if that's wrong. I could not figure out what was wrong with it. So I ended up getting a jump. It was fine. So as I'm sleeping in the truck overnight, the truck ended up cutting off. So the truck ended up cutting off, and now I'm freezing. Now, I don't have anything on this truck right now at this point. I don't have any covers. I don't have anything on this truck. So I'm literally in my coat and I done took like three, four pair of socks. I done got a whole bunch of pair of pants. I done got how, sweaters on. How long did it take for breakdown to get somebody there? This sounds like you've been. Oh my goodness! This sounds like you've been hemmed up for a little, a little bit. Yeah, literally overnight. I was like, what? Because the person had already in the truck. Was okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. Where, where were you? Were you broke down on the highway, or you was broke down at? No, I was, I was broke down at the Costco store. So um, they they couldn't get you a they couldn't get you a Uber to go over to a hotel or something like that. They had um end up saying, well, actually, the person at the front desk was not answering the phone, so I'm calling my family like. Hey, you know, can you come get me? You know, I don't got no covers, no nothing. So my family ended up coming get coming. Actually, no, my granny was actually asleep, and she did not end up. She did not end up answering the phone. And then my cousin, she, I don't know, she just didn't want to come get me for whatever reason. So I was just like, dang. So now I'm just literally on this truck, freezing. Got gloves on. Nah, no, that's not cool. Everything. That's that's not cool, man. And it's what, it's, it, nobody, n- not even your dispatcher, not even breakdown was couldn't even nobody. accommodate you to uh, couldn't accommodate you to to a hotel or something like that. No, like literally, I I couldn't even sleep. It was so cold. Like I said, the the dispatch overnight was not answered. So when I like literally it was like six o'clock in the morning. I'm blowing up. 
my 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 um driver leader because I got her personal sales. Um, so I'm blowing her up like, hey, you know, she's like, what's going on? I'm just like, hey, I've been in this truck. It's cold. Like it's freezing. The truck done broke down again. Like. Like, cause he had got it working in the, in the, the heat and stuff was working, but it ended up stopping in the middle of me going to sleep. And so I was just like, I'm literally, I have no covers on this thing. I've been calling. Nobody's answering this back. I called, I even called emergency breakdown. Nobody was answering. And then they basically was telling me like, it's not life or death. It's cause they said I was next to um, a Costco. I'm like, Costco is closed. It's not 24 hours. Like, what are y'all talking about? They was just like, well, see if you can go in the building. Oh, There's no one here in the God. building. How am I going to the building? Literally, like, and she was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, so, she was just like, oh, no. We're going to handle this right now. She basically, you know, told the boss, because I was calling the boss, too. I was calling him. Like, I got his personal, I made sure that I got everybody personal sale. Because I'm just like, man, I'm not about to be stranded. And something told me, like, if we don't take this load, do not take this, this load. It's not time for you to this go. Sound, right this sounds like just, this sounds like the load from hell. I mean, that was. It, man, that was. When I tell you, it was just so horrible. They could not find me a truck for a whole week. I had to stay in a hotel. I had to. I kept I kept switching hotels, and then when I finally. Like, luckily, I still was able to, like, have my car and stuff, and I was in my city, you know, so I was just like, whew. So, are you are you still with Swift to this day? I stopped because of COVID, but I don't think I'm going to go back. Okay, 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 because I'm... I'm thinking like, you know, through all that, through, through all the issues, you know, I, I knew that some people will probably want to power through to get their experience. But if you kept getting issues after issues after issues, then it might be time to, you know, look for another home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So like that was just weak one. That wasn't even everything else that I've been through. So, so, so you say you stop, you, you, you stop driving, you stop driving period because of COVID or you just stop driving for Swift because of COVID because of the freight, it freight slowed down. Yeah. I didn't stop period because of, um, COVID. Like, um, right now I'm in my city. I have a nine to five and I, I'm getting paid. As much as I was when I was out on the road. And I was, that's another thing. My pay was not adding up. And they kept trying to play me on the pay. Um, it was like every time it was time to get paid, it's like, oh, I'm missing this. And then it's like, no, we paid you. No, you didn't. Like, I'm doing the math right now. Oh, okay, we'll put it on your next check. Then the next check comes, something else is missing. Yeah, I, hate, like, I hate that. I, I really do. When I was working for U.S. Express. Yeah, and then they try to say, like, yeah. it's your paperwork. No, it's not my paperwork. Yeah, I like, I make that. sure I screenshot everything. And, like, no, nah, you're not going to try to play me. All right. So, uh, so now that you now that you back doing uh doing the nine to five, do you do you miss it? You said that you're going to try and get back into it. So you have any idea of uh, any any company that you might be interested in going back uh, going with? Um, I actually, um, I don't really know what I want to do. I know I do want to drive. I do miss driving, but I don't think I want to drive fifty three foot no more. <laughs> Okay. I don't think that's for me. Okay. It's just, it's just too stressful for me. Okay. Like I don't, I feel like you should go to work and have fun. Like I feel like Swift just kind of like kind of took the drive right out of you, huh? Yeah. Wow. That kind of, kind of, kind of popped the balloon right there. Damn it, man. Damn it, Swift. Oh man, damn it! I, you know, I was gonna ask you what was gonna be your impact in the industry, man. Now that, now that Swift just threw this, just threw a monkey wrench and everything, you, you, you don't even have well, an impact. I'm really working on. Uh, I really, because I'm really like um, I'm really trying to get my dispatching stuff together. I really want to be like dispatching, doing office work. You know, that's what my little 
um, majors in like um, office administration and um, just basically doing all that stuff. Like, I feel like I'd be, I can have my own business doing that without having all the stress of, you know, like, oh, you know, I have to do this and I have to be there at that time. And then that's another thing. Swift is so unorganized that if I had to, if I had to be there, they would basically send me late loads, right? Mm-hmm. So a load could have already had been due, and then they would try to dock me for it being due when I just got on the load. So basically, okay, let's say like today. Today is the 20th. So if the load was due tomorrow, I mean, if the load was due on the 19th and I just got it on the on the 20th, and then I don't get it, you know, actually delivered until the 21st, they would try to dock me for the 19th when I just got the load on the 20th. Mm. So you say Swift trying to do you dirty, man. And now that yeah, they, they, kinda, uh, they, they, and I ain't going to say it's a black thing, but I kind of think it's a black thing. Cause I've noticed that it, on YouTube, a lot of black people have things um, wrong with that company. And I try to make it seem like, okay, maybe it's just cause they're so large, but when you just see review after review after review after review, and yes, some of them, you know, you, you can't take everything, you know, for what it is. But some of them, I believe that some of this stuff do happen because I've experienced it, you know. So, um, or they send you, like, wrong numbers, and then they have you look. Like, I remember literally um, I was looking for a trailer number. And they, the the yard was literally a mess. No yard dog could help. Um, and whole time it was the wrong trailer number that I was looking for. And I was literally losing drive time because I was looking for this trailer. All right. Well, Tiffany, man, hopefully your 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 next uh your your next bout in trucking will be. Uh, will be a better experience. Uh, are you going to keep your CDLs or are you going to give them up? No, I'm going to keep my CDL because I think I want to drive like a bus or something. Okay. I don't know. I got a couple years to think about it. But um, I think I do want to go back to doing something as far as driving. Okay, okay. So uh, before we get up out of here, I got a, I got a couple of quick questions for you. What, what was your... You said uh, you said in one of your videos how to make five hundred dollars each week doing DoorDash. How do you make five hundred dollars each week doing DoorDash? Because I I talked to some of the people in DoorDash and the money is not all that high. <laughs> how you how you manage to do five hundred dollars a week doing DoorDash? Literally, that's what I make now. Um, literally, um. I just door dash every day. Like I said, I have a nine to five and then I go out and door dash. I door dash all day during the weekend. Um, you know, and then right now is the perfect time for you to do door dash because everybody's at home. They have nothing to do. They don't want to go out. They, they want to order food. And guess what? It's so busy that they're having surges and they're having, Oh, you can make plus $2. So, you know, plus three dollars. I remember one night it was like plus seven dollars. Um, so not only are you getting the money that they tip you, but the money that DoorDash gives you plus your seven dollar surge or whatever the surge is. So all that money adds up. Um, have you have you had any like said, have you had any bad experience with DoorDash? Like, have you got have you got up to a to a person that you know? You you call them up and you say that they that you hear and they want you to do something crazy and you and you felt some kind of way about that. Um, I'm not gonna. No, I haven't had a crazy experience like that. But I have had somebody literally. Um, I drop their food off to them and then they say that they never got their order. <laughs> like literally went upstairs, dropped the food off, and then I get a notification from DoorDash that I never dropped the food off. Wow. Um, 
I think that's the most craziest thing. I mean, I've had somebody that was real drunk fall coming down the steps, <laughs> and I just kind of left their food right there. <laughs> um, that's about as crazy as it gets. But like I said, I I, I try to you know keep my distance from that type of thing. <laughs> Oh, wrong button. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> ah, man. Well, Tiffany Hustle, thank you for coming on. Now we can hit that. There we go. Now we can hit that. Thanks for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you coming Thanks, on? Man. Yeah, you coming on? To, uh, talking your experience. It's just unfortunate that Swift kind of like door dashed your your feelings as far as trucking goes man that's it's kind of crazy let me ask you this do you have any uh advice for uh young females such as yourself that's coming into the game uh you have any advice for them um just to research the company make sure that the numbers add up and also do not make yourself the doorknob if, if they can well, door back. If they can walk over you, they will. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Have you had any? You you didn't have no bad experience other than uh, you didn't have no bad experience with any uh any of the truckers out here that they, you know that try to push up on you or anything like that in the, in 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 the uh, say like in the uh, fuel stations and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You didn't you didn't experience anything like that, did you? God basically wouldn't take no for an answer. Um, try to tell him, you know, like, hey, I got a boyfriend. You know, I end up having to hurry up and text my mentor, like, hey, get out here. And then he ended up leaving me alone, like, because he was not trying to leave me alone at all. Like, kept asking me to dinner, asking me for dessert, and I'm just like, nah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> I don't know. You say you don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Well, Tiffany, again, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on uh, the Lockout Men podcast, make sure you hit me up at the Lockout Men podcast at gmail.com. Or you can go over to Instagram and DM me over there and say, hey, Lockout Men, I want to come on and we could chop it up. We can go ahead and book a time because I'm getting a whole bunch of <laughs> bunch of people that's coming on to the podcast, which I do appreciate everybody that, that has come on here and that will be on the podcast. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and of course, this is the Lockout Men podcast show. Special thanks to my special guest, Tiffany. Tiffany Hustle, y'all. <laughs> I love that name. I love that name. All right. Thank you. All right. So, Tiffany, you stay safe out there and all like that. I'm about to bring my cousin, DJ Ryan Wolf, in. Who is that? And he DJ will play like us that? out. Uh, uh, Tiffany, uh, you stay chill uh, and. Uh, yeah. And if you're a friend of the show and you can, uh, if anything you want to talk about, definitely come back and holler at me. Yeah, I'm the dope man. All right, hold on, wait a Yeah, I'm the dope man. Yeah, I'm the dope man. Something like the bird man. Huh? 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 Huh?